analogies is a powerful way to convince your audience, because analogies can be easy to grasp, since they ground the argument in phenomena or mechanisms that people already know. For instance, the metaphor of the solar system was quite instrumental in popularizing the model of the atom composed of a nucleus and electrons revolving around it. Analogies are a perfectly legitimate way to inspire, inspire hypotheses, or in other words, to make abductive inferences. However, they can be deceitful too when they are misused. I'll give you a classic example drawn from the debates on gun control. So making people register their own guns is like the Nazis making the Jews register with their government. This policy is crazy. Well, it's not a very good analogy, is it? Or another one. People who buy stocks are no different from people who bet on horses racing. They both risk their money with little chance of making a big profit. We have heard quite a few false analogies in discussions on the threat posed by the coronavirus, and that involved numbers. A beautiful one involved data on the lethality rates for people under 60 years old that appears somehow similar to the ones of the flu. If you add the fact that for many people the symptoms were pretty similar, what happens? Some pretty influential politicians actually downplayed the gravity of the pandemic and explained us that it was not much more than a mere flu and that there were no reasons whatsoever to panic, delaying the enforcement of strong preventive measures and causing in the process a few deaths, of course. Why using uh, the flu analogy was a deadly mistake? Firstly, the calculation of lethality rates is not precise uh, during an ongoing uh, epidemic, and sampling rates vary amidst countries due to the differential availability of testing kits. So you are facing a sampling bias. Secondly, you are cherry-picking, just forgetting that lethality rates for people in their 70s or 80s are closer to 15% or, we don't know, some above 5% very often, which is way above a common flu, regardless of the sampling bias. And forgetting about the exponential growth of the virus, which could in the end kill many more people than the common flu. Well, you see false analogies usually uh, result from fallacies, so you have to already have quite a, a few skills in argumentation if you want to be able to debunk them uh, efficiently. By the way, it's the perfect opportunity to remind you that fallacies sometimes kill people. You can die any way you want, but passing with a Darwin Award because of a stupid reasoning isn't the classiest way to leave this planet, is it? <laughs>